It is wonderful to see all of you. I hope uh, you had just the right amount of fun last night and not too much fun. Uh, I, you know, it's hard to believe that that was the final dinner Michelle and I get to host for you. Uh, like me, some of you might be in the final year of your last term, working as hard as you can uh, to get as much done as possible for uh, the folks that you represent. Uh, fixing roads, educating our children, uh, helping people retrain, appointing judges, the usual stuff. <laughs> Those of you who've been in office for a while have also witnessed uh, all the progress that we have made together, uh, and it has been a partnership. The millions of new jobs created, millions of people newly covered with health insurance, uh, the new energy projects that are popping up all across every state uh, that's represented here. I do want to comment before I take questions on the issue of security for the American people. Uh, whatever our party, uh, we all raise our hand and take an oath and assume the solemn responsibility to protect our citizens. And that is a mission that should unite us all as Americans. Uh, today, we're focused on three threats in particular. First and foremost is terrorism. Uh, the attacks in Garland, Texas, in Chattanooga, in San Bernardino uh, were attacks in, in good and decent communities, but they were also attacks on our entire country. Uh, as Americans, we are united in support of the men and women in uniform from every state who lead the coalition we've built with the mission to destroy ISIL. Uh, we're working with other nations to prevent terrorists from entering the United States. We're unwavering in our efforts to prevent attacks here at home. Uh, and that's where the partnership with your states come in. This is a shared mission. Uh, we have to stay vigilant. Across the country, we've got more than 100 joint terrorism task forces, federal, state, local experts working together to disrupt threats. And at the state level, your fusion cells are pushing information out to law enforcement. Uh, we've also need, we also need to make sure our extraordinary law enforcement professionals and first responders have the equipment and the resources that they need. And we've got to stay united as one American family working with communities to help prevent loved ones from becoming radicalized and rejecting any politics that tries to divide the American people on the basis of faith. Um, so this is something that, this is a shared project. It's not something that we do together. And one of the genuine areas of progress that I've seen since I came into office, and it was started in the previous administration, and uh, this was one of the findings of 9-11, was breaking down some of the silos between federal, state, and local uh, law enforcement when it comes to uh, countering terrorism. We've made progress on that, but that's where uh, state uh, and local uh, partners are absolutely critical. This is not something that the federal government can do alone, particularly because many of the attacks may end up being lone wolf attacks rather than uh, those imported uh, from the outside. The attack in San Bernardino killed 14 of our fellow Americans, uh, and here's a hard truth. Uh, we probably lost even more Americans than that to guns this weekend alone. Uh, on Saturday, another one of our communities was terrorized by gun violence. Uh, as many of you read, six people were gunned down in a rampage in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, before I joined all of you, I called the mayor, the sheriff, and the police chief there uh, and told them that they would have whatever federal support they needed in their investigation. Uh, their local officials and first responders, by the way, did an outstanding job in apprehending the individual very quickly. Uh, but uh, you got families who uh, are shattered today. Uh, earlier this year, I took some steps that will make it harder for dangerous people uh, like this individual to buy a gun, but clearly we're going to need to do more if we're going to keep uh, innocent Americans safe. And I've got to assume that all of you are just as tired as I am of seeing this stuff happen in your states. Uh, so that's an area where we also need to partner uh, and think about what we can do in a common sense way, in a bipartisan way, without some of the ideological uh, rhetoric that so often surrounds that issue. A second area of threats that we're focused on is cyber threats. 
the technology that connects us like never before also allows our adversaries to do us harm. Hackers and nations are, have targeted our military, our corporations, the federal government, and state governments. They're a threat to our national security. They're also a threat to our economic leadership. They're a threat to our critical infrastructure. They're a threat to the privacy and public safety of the American people. This is a complex challenge, and we're not going to be able to meet it alone. We've made a lot of progress these past seven years, including sharing more information with industry and with your states. But all of us are still vulnerable. Uh, so this is why earlier uh, this month, I launched the Cybersecurity National Action Plan and proposed significant funding uh, to push our cybersecurity efforts uh, in a more uh, aggressive direction. Uh, we're going to start uh, a major overhaul of federal computer systems. I want to do more with your states, including sharing more information about threats, improving our joint response capabilities. Uh, we have initiated a joint bipartisan commission uh, made up of one of my national security uh, advisors, former national security advisors, uh, Tom Donilon, uh, but joined with the former CEO of uh, IBM uh, so that they can work together to help provide us a sense of direction, both at the federal and state levels, as well as the private sector, in terms of how we uh, move forward on this. We're going to want your input. Uh, and uh, I think that we probably have some good ideas about where your vulnerabilities are in terms of your state databases and what you're doing there. So that's an area where I think we can profitably work together. Finally, uh, we all have to remain vigilant when it comes to the spread of disease. <coughs> Uh, since late last year, my administration has been focused on the threat of Zika. So far, while there's no evidence of Zika transmission from mosquitoes here in the continental United States, there are confirmed cases in Puerto Rico. Uh, and as leaders, it's important that we convey very basic facts, including the fact that Zika is not like Ebola. Ebola was primarily spread from human to human, based on what we know right now, Zika spreads predominantly through the bite of a certain kind of mosquito that's limited to certain parts of the country. Symptoms are generally very mild. Uh, most folks don't even realize that they have it, uh, but as all of you have read, uh, the possible connection between Zika, birth defects, and other serious health problems means that we've got to take precautions, particularly with respect to women who are pregnant or are trying to get pregnant. So we're going to be fighting. Uh, this disease at every level with every tool at our disposal. I've called, at, I've called on Congress to approve about $1.9 billion in emergency funding for our efforts at home and abroad, including research into better diagnostic tools, new vaccines, improved methods to, uh, of mosquito control, and support for Puerto Rico and territories where there are confirmed cases. And we're going to be launching an aggressive coordinated campaign with the NGA to stop Zika at the source and keep Americans healthy. I hope each of you join us, especially if you're in some of the southern states where uh, the risk of transmission may be higher. So fighting terrorism and gun violence, combating cyber attacks and cyber threats, guarding against the outbreak of disease, uh, these are some areas where uh, there shouldn't be any dispute. We've got to be working together to keep our country safe and strong. And I look forward to uh, the partnership with the NGA uh, in each and every one of you uh, in all of these areas. I should point out that uh, one of the things I'm proudest of over the course of the last seven years is, is that uh, the uh, federal coordination with state and local governments with respect to disaster response, uh, I think, has been extraordinary. Um, you know, I'm really proud of the work that Craig Fugate and FEMA has done. Uh, and uh, I, I think that that kind of model of partnership uh, across many of these threats is uh, exactly what's needed to give uh, the American people the confidence that their government's on their side when they need it most.